This young man was undoubtedly extended the hand of fellowship as well as an open Bible and brought to the table for discussion and, 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 and teaching in terms of the scripture. And the fact, the idea that he could have laid down a Bible to take up a gun and assassinate nine people uh, is morally incomprehensible. NAACP President Cornell William Brooks on CNN discussing the cold-blooded murder of nine people while at a Bible study Wednesday night in church. This attack once again raises question about guns and gun control. Joining us now, former New York Police Commissioner Bernie Carrick. He is also the author of the book, From Jailer to Jail. Bernie, we thank you for your time again here on Newsmax Prime. Thanks, J.D. Bernie, if someone in the congregation had a gun that night, would that have made a difference in the situation they confronted there? You know what, J.D., uh, you know, you can't, you can't sit back and, and try to Monday morning quarterback who could have, would have, should have done something. The reality is this was a sick, sick man, a uh, sick young man. Um, you know, you have to think of the evilness uh, uh, of this kid. To go in, um, you know, befriend these people, sit with them for an hour in, in a prayer service. He had he had to be introduced to them. He had to get to know their name. Maybe they told them, told him something about themselves, and then at some point, just shut that out and take out a gun and begin and begin, you know, executing people. Um, it, 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 he is an evil, evil person, and. Uh, you know, if somebody else had a gun in the room, could it have been different? Maybe, uh, maybe not. Who knows? Well, Bernie, we do know there have been other instances that uh, we look back at and continue to question. For example, what transpired at Sandy Hook Elementary School a few years ago pushed some people to seek gun control legislation. There was a backlash. There continues to this day to be a backlash among gun owners in Connecticut. Uh, do you think we will see again a call for gun control in the wake of what happened in Charleston? Yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, it happens uh, whenever you have an incident like this. Uh, the reality is uh, New York City, Chicago, um, uh, some other areas, other cities, uh, states in this country, they have some of the toughest, harshest um, gun laws. New Jersey, the roughest gun laws in the state, uh, in this country. And, um, it, you know, it really makes it no difference when, when the bad guys want to get guns, they get them um, and they use them for what they want. Uh, the reality is it's, it's the people. Um, I, I don't blame the guns. I don't blame gun owners. I don't blame the gun manufacturers. That's me personally. I blame the people that use guns to commit crimes. Um, and this, this incident is, uh, is no different to me. Bernie, you just went through a litany of states and localities with rather stringent gun control statutes on the books. Uh, should those states and municipalities start to look now at concealed carry permits and allowing more freedom for law-abiding citizens to uh, have firearms? You know what, J.D., that's always been a debate, um, and you have areas in this country and, uh, and uh, other places where you know, people have said, uh, if I have the right to carry, if, uh, you know, somebody was thinking of, of robbing a restaurant in the middle of uh, somewhere in Texas, and they, uh, and they feel that maybe six or seven people inside that restaurant were carrying firearms, they'd be less apt to do it. Uh, you know, that, that's a debate that will go on forever and ever. Uh, the reality is, I, I don't think the harshest of the harsh gun laws really stops the bad guys. You know, look at look at Chicago, 40, 60, 80 people shot over a weekend. Um, you know, teen, you know, the numbers in the tens uh, killed. Uh, New York City, New Jersey, the same. Uh, these are where these harshest gun laws are. I, I think we have to focus on the bad people, focus on the people that use guns for bad things. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not one of these guys that's going after the gun companies and, and uh, the gun owners. I, I think there's a Second, Second Amendment right that we have, uh, people have by the Constitution. I think they should be allowed to, uh, to possess and bear arms. But um, I, I think bad people that do bad things with guns, they've got to be dealt with. And as we look at this situation, one of the other 
points to ponder, and a lot of people have been reflecting on it, race relations in this country. Uh, will something good come out of Charleston in the wake of this tragedy, in your opinion? I think some, something good has come out of Charleston already. And, and, and you know, uh, as an outsider, uh, you know, I've been to Charleston a few times to give speeches, and I've met a number of people there. This is a, a very uh, religious community. It's, it's a, a community that brings people together long before this. And I'm sure it's going to be a resilient community uh, based on what I've seen already. I, I mean, I literally, uh, during that kid's hearing, uh, I, was, I was brought to tears by some of the people, some of the victims' families that spoke to him, um, forgiving him, uh, which I, I have to tell you, me, myself, I don't think I'd be that forgiving, but um, I, I think something will good come out will come out of this good, and uh, it's a shame it just had to happen. Bernie Carrick, we appreciate your reflections, and sir, we thank you for your time. Bernie, the author of the book "From Jailer to Jailed." Still to come, we heard from Rick Perry earlier, and Richard Vigory, one of the founding fathers of modern conservatism, will discuss some newly released Newsmax poll numbers on all the major GOP candidates. Then later, $137 billion. That's how much the feds claim it will cost to repeal Obamacare. Health policy expert Betsy McCoy weighs in. But first, the Supreme Court rules in favor of Texas and against the Confederate flag. Larry Elder and Ellis Hinnikin will join us as Newsmax Prime continues.